Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It's Wednesday, a two-show day. I mean, not for us, but for Broadway. December 4th, I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontora. And we're here with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Hey, Beth. Who's our guest today? Oh, I'm so excited because Kelvin Moon Lowe is here from Beetlejuice. Yay. Oh, applause, ladies so and gentlemen. So funny. Yes. So funny. So Such funny. Such a sweet guy. So sweet. So awesome. But first, our top five. We found out today who's going to be help bringing this show to Broadway. Well, we found out who's going to do the hanging. So um, Martin McDonough's Hangman, yes. which is a play you loved off uh, Broadway that I, I couldn't get into. I, I Too guess slow. I missed it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, there's this big juicy role, Mooney, right? That's correct. And we just found what's so funny. You don't. You, and we I just found out that Dan Stevens, uh, aka the Beast. In live action, is that funny that mm -hmm. that's his main credit mm -hmm. to me? <laughs> uh, I mean, he made Abbey. billions of dollars. It's a huge yeah. credit on his resume. Yes. Um, and but he was also in Downton Abbey, and he was on Broadway in The Heiress, um, and what else is he in? Legion. Um, so he will be headlining Martin McDonald's play, which, like I said, it was a big hit off Broadway. It takes place in England on the day when hanging has been abolished, and he will play Harry, who is apparently the second best hangman. Hangman. Um, that was a profession, I guess. It was, did, yes. Did, did you need a resume to get hired as a hangman? Did they, they tell you who you hung? Anyway, I don't know much about that answering career. these questions. Um, do we know what the rest of the cast? Yes, we yes. do. Tracy Bennett. So Tracy Bennett, who was Judy Garland on she Broadway. She was. She was. In The End of the Rainbow, which, of course, was adapted into the Renee Zellweger film. Judy. Um, she will also be joining him. And Mark Addy. Of Game of Thrones fame. If you watch that. Uh, John Hopkinson, uh, and more, directed by Matthew Dunster. This all, all happens February 28th, preview start, the Golden Theater. Laura Linney is ready, and so are we. Laura Linney doesn't need any extra time. <laughs> she's got her lines down, and she's ready like, to start her show. For? <laughs> and what we're trying to say is, my name is Lucy Barton, which is coming to Broadway, is starting its previews early. I she's wonder ready. how that decision is made. She's ready. This doesn't do happen. So it was originally announced to start performances on January 6th, but Laura Linney was like, let's do January 4th. And they said, done and done. <laughs> That's what's happening. That's what happened. At the Manhattan Theater Club, Samuel J. Friedman Theater. It opens January 15th. You can go early. She's ready. It's fine. Sure. It's fine. More casting has been announced for The Perplexed Off-Broadway. So what a the, title. The Perplexed, I have a hard time saying that for some reason. It's Richard Greenberg's latest play. Mm. And we just found out that four-time Tony nominee Greg Edelman will be headlining the cast, uh, along with Eric William Morris, who was recently in King Kong, which I loved. Thank Bite you for the pause. It. Thank you for the pause. I loved it. <laughs> um, <laughs> made me cry. Anyway, Greg Edelman uh, earned 20 nominations for City of Angels. So good. He played Stein, not Stone. Anna Karenina, 1776, Into the Woods. And Morris was also in Mamma Mia, Quorum Boy. And they'll be joining uh, Frank Wood, Margaret Coleman, Alana Levine, Patrick Breen. We already knew they were in it. This centers on two families gathered in the massive library of a gaudy Fifth Avenue apartment to celebrate the nuptials of children. And some drama happens. It's I over love a city's... gaudy Fifth Avenue apartment. That it's sounds very fun. Richard Greenberg. I love that. Uh, this is uh, City Center Stage 1, and it's happening next year. I don't have the dates in front of me, but it's going to be good. This off-Broadway work has received yet another extension. So Tony, I can't even talk. Tony Kushner's A Bright Room Called Day, which is playing at the Public Theater, has extended again. I mean, this, this is like a, I'm, all right, I'm catching on Public Theater. This is a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. They, like, they, they love to get like, a news story out every week because they like announce like, oh, it's only going to run like three weeks. And then every week so, they announce yeah. an extension. <laughs> so it was originally years. scheduled to play through December 8th. Now it's playing through December 22nd. Oh. I have more news, though. Michael Yuri is leaving what? the... The show because he's in Grand Horizons and they're starting rehearsals. And oh, Bill Heck is taking over performances. Sorry. Yeah. Bill Heck is taking over the role, and he begins December fourteenth. Don't you love Bill Heck? I know you do. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm into it. And Joey Mack is coming back. Oh, Aww. we love Joey Mack. Yes, we do. Um, he was here. He, he sat right here for a lot of five. It was fantastic. He was in Waitress on Broadway recently, and he was also uh, in something, New Kids on the Block. Oh, that Joey Mac. Mac McIntyre. And, and a film I version see. of The Fantastics. Oh, Remember yeah. that? <laughs> uh, anyway, he will now be, you know, this, so this is a crazy idea. They're going to make a musical about, a, a, you're already laughing, I'm about a rock star using that person's music. What? It's wait, crazy. wait, slow down. You're going too fast. It's crazy. 
<laughs> it's like they're going to take Whoa. a song catalog and tell the story of someone. It's Ooh. nuts. Whoa. Anyway, wow. this one's going to be about Dion, um, who had that big uh, runaround Sue, right? Mm -hmm. And a teenager in love. I wonder why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so he, it's Dion DiMucci, and Joey McIntyre would be playing Dion, and a, he is... What is he? Is a troubled young man who turns teenage heartthrob and rock and roll icon. And this will be at Paper Mill Playhouse in spring of 2020. And what else do we know about this show? We don't know a lot of the other cast members, but it's just sort of, it, I think what happened is it got announced sort of accidentally. But now I think Joey announced it in an interview or something. Like, By the way, this like, is what oh, I'm doing. Paper Mill was like, oh yeah, he is doing that. <laughs> so anyway, he got a little ahead of the story. But we're very excited. He's super talented, and he'll be playing Dion. I don't know much about Dion, but You'll learn. I'm sure I'll be going out to Melbourne, New Jersey, and finding out more. <laughs> That's right. What else do we have on the site, Paul? Oh, well, so I did a show people with Elizabeth Stanley. Yes. The fantastic Stars Elizabeth is... Stanley, who is opening tomorrow night in Jagged Little Pill on Broadway. Loved having her here. Yes. And we also visited the Illusionists for some magical times, right, Caitlin? Uh, How did that go? Oh, you're, yeah, it you're all magical. over this. I love this stuff. What's, what's holiday about it? Um, I asked show. that very Does Santa question. Claus disappear or something? <laughs> no, there's like, there's like fun little like things that make you, it's festive. Like they're like outfits? Th <laughs> yes. A. <laughs> Yes, they and always wear outfits. There's like Mistletoe. candy canes and like. Oh. It's the same show. They just wear Santa Claus hats. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they make the Rockettes disappear. It's back on Broadway. The Rockettes. Okay. It's become yeah. a Broadway institution. It has. It's fifth it's year every year. Yeah. Fifth what? Year. Fifth year. That's crazy. Okay. It's nuts. Well, Paul. I'm getting out of here. It's been There's a pleasure. A much funnier person here to take my spot. Although you're hilarious. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest, please? Gladly. Yes, we got Kelvin Munlo here with us today. He is currently Otho in Beetlejuice on Broadway. Mm -hmm. You may have recently seen him when he was in SpongeBob SquarePants on the Broadway. And he also is reprising that performance for when it makes its Nickelodeon debut this week on December 7th. We're very excited. You may have also seen him. Some of his other stage credits include King and I, Sideshow, Here Lies Love. He's been in a lot of things. Make sure you follow him on social media at Kelvin Munlo. He just got verified, so you know it's him. Oh my God. He did it. Come on. <laughs> Make sure you follow him there. Leave all of your questions in the comments below. And everyone, please welcome Kelvin and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Yay. I'm sitting next to a verified person. I'm verified. You're real now. Uh, before that, nothing else mattered. I feel like there's a blue check somewhere. Like you're getting a tattoo <laughs> it's, or something. It's, 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 it's under underneath. here, underneath my, it's <laughs> underneath my Spanx. Underneath. <laughs> we have so much to talk about. I don't know how we're going to fit it all in here, but we're going to go fast. Let's do, Let's do it. First of all, you are glamtastic. Thank you. <laughs> in Beetlejuice and in life. Um, tell me about just being a guru in Beetlejuice. Uh, you know, and how do we get to sign up to have you be our guru? I don't think you want me in real life. <laughs> okay. I, I'm really thankful for the lines that Anthony King and Scott gave me for the stage. Uh, but in real life, I think I'm kind of a disaster. I wouldn't. Don't ask me. Oh, in real life. okay. You can't just tell. Listen, other I could tell you how to live your life, but oh. you know, no. <laughs> but you are really guiding Leslie Kritzer. Leslie Kritzer. Doesn't need any guidance in real life, mm -hmm. but on stage I get the pleasure to pretend as if I, I'm actually giving her any kind of advice throughout the entire show. Uh, you step on stage and you command it. Oh, thanks. I, 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 when I first heard about the musical, first of all, I'm an 80s kid. Everything about the 80s, everything about the movies were incredible, and I loved Beetlejuice, and Glenn Shaddix, he did so much. He mm -hmm. played the character of Otho, which I get to do on stage, and... And he I, passed away a while ago. He did. Yeah. He did, unfortunately, because he was a he was a really talented man and hysterically funny. But I said, "Great, he's out of the way. I'm going to take yeah. it. <laughs> I'm going to take Move the over. job now." Um, but you know, Leslie, I, we get to play off of each other. It's this whole thing. You know, we did. How are you not cracking up every night, or are you? Oh, maybe oh. we do it too much before the curtain goes <laughs> up, and then we have nothing left of the stage. <laughs> we let the audience do it, but mm. you know, it is. For sure, during the rehearsal process, you would just watch Leslie playing Delia, and everything about her is insanely funny. And you just go, I. So I, I have this thing on stage now where it's, Otho is very flamboyant, and he uses his hands all the time. And so one thing that I'm glad that I use my hands because I can just do this when she's when Leslie's <laughs> doing stuff on stage, and just a good old no, no, no. It's an ism. It's an ism. It's really just mm -hmm. me. 
<laughs> trying good to cover. not break, right? It's a good cover. Works, right? So how was the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade for you? It and was, a costume change. It was so early. <laughs> <laughs> it was early. Uh, it was fabulous. It's, it's my second time I got to do it. I got to do it with SpongeBob uh, two years ago. Um, was it colder then? It was colder. It, it's usually cold, but it's kind of nice this year. Well, I, we well you the, tell me. I don't know. We did the opening number. So uh, William Ivy Long designed me this really beautiful jacket with a really beautiful stole on it. And so it's like, oh, this will do fine in the parade. <laughs> so I got really lucky. I got really lucky about that. And um, But, you know, you start to wear your, your tights. and but. What time did you have to be there? So I got up and I left my apartment at 4.15. Got to the theater about 5 a.m. Um, then we start doing makeup. They get us on the bus. They put in trailers by 6, rehearsing in the morning before the whole thing happens, 7. And then we were live on TV about 8.30, 8.30, oh 8, 8.15 God. or sometime around that. It's a, it's a, but the entire time you're just it works running. so well, though. You're just running on adrenaline. You're like, yeah. I, because I'm an East Coast kid. I'm from New York. Mm-hmm. I'm from Long Island. And it's one of those things you watch every year on TV. It's before the YouTube, before <laughs> Broadway.com. Well, there was never before Broadway.com. <laughs> Thank me. you, Kevin. We love um, you. <laughs> but before, you know, all the amazing video content that you could see on TV, on mm-hmm. your computer, you had to record on VHS, yes, you know, yes. VCR, the Macy's Day Parade. Mm-hmm. It was that and the Tony Awards. That's right. And you like obsessed over, and you, you know. All I, right, let's go back. Let's go back to Long Island, Kelvin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I looked at an old Playbill bio of you, uh-huh. and you were into the guy liner. You had that in your bio mm-hmm. for American Idiot. <laughs> that hasn't changed at all. Okay. Not to this moment. <laughs> but you're a little bit of a goth child. Yep. yep. A little bit. Well, goth child. Go- a goth child. Like, not a Rothschild, a goth child. I mean, it just, anybody else feel like it just went hand in hand with, like, musical theater? It's theatrical. Well, no, it was theatrical. It was, I got to wear a costume every day. It was, like, Jinko jeans, like, the big, <laughs> like, flare-out jeans. I had, you know, if you weren't, you weren't a product, you weren't in high school on Long Island if your wallet wasn't attached to a chain. You need a chain, of you course. Know? And so you just, it's <laughs> it important. Really necessary. You're going to lose your wallet with all $2 in it. So there you are with your guy liner and your chain and your... Uh huh. Your whole situation. And then musicals. That's what I'm saying. So, what were you <laughs> taping? What were you watching? What was your Thanksgiving okay. Day parade? What was your Tony Award S- moment? So, everyone has their on ramp. This, this one, this, I mean, I, I recorded them. And so, first of all, I had the, what, maybe 12 inch TV, right? right. The 12, in, 12 inch VHS TV combo. So, the, v, oh, the VCR is no, inside those. of it, yes, right? Of course. So, you're, you press play on that and then you have a VHS underneath it and then you make like the mega tape right so it just goes musical to musical to musical but the one I guess the one performance I was like all right this by this point I didn't know I, I knew I loved musicals but I didn't know I wanted to do it but the one that got three tapes in a row like I literally said I'm going to I don't know who this woman is mm-hmm. I just discovered her I kind of didn't hear about the show it was Sutton Foster. Wow. Her performance mm. of Forget About the Boy and Tony Ward's Thoroughly about her Millie. I put it three times in a row, back to back. And I thought, and I lost. You just looped it. You just I, watched I did. It. And I then did. you were in Millie. I did Millie. That was my first equity contract on the Long Look Island. At that. The Look Gateway at that. Playhouse. Come on. <laughs> and uh, it all came full circle. So that was great. Um, but you, that was it. That, she did it for me. And I saw, and then I moved to Hell's Kitchen. I went to NYU. And then, you know, I don't want to blow up where she lives. I already no. said it. Hell's okay. Kitchen. It's fine. And I saw her walking her dog. I was like, I want to scream everything Did at you? Did you? No. Okay. Yeah, because you, no. you want to act cool. I want to be like, yeah, I'll work with you one day. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going <laughs> to be, be, be great. Have you ever met her besides have, this, the, the um, stockings on the street? I have. Uh, I got to work with Megan McGinnis in Sideshow. And on mm-hmm. opening night, Megan in Invited Sutton to the party. Invited Sutton to the party. Because Megan was the, was the standby was, was for the stand girls. Standby for the girls. And, I, and every part of me just, I don't want to talk Did about anything I'm in. I just want to talk about Sutton Foster for the rest of the night. <laughs> We're right? here for you. That's fine, right? That's Let, you can fine. come back tomorrow if you want. Okay. Okay. Just a whole Sutton Foster love fest. I'm in Beetlejuice. That's why I'm here. Okay, let's talk about Beetlejuice. <laughs> but before we talk about Beetlejuice, we have to talk about SpongeBob. SpongeBob. First of all, this cast was such a great family you guys all really yeah. bonded and you were so hilarious oh thanks tell me about coming back together um it, it, for the filming so we got to film it we filmed it um last month in all of england 
All we of got England. in all of England. Every corner. Uh, we did it in the countryside. Uh, we were in England and we got the film SpongeBob live for the stage. Did you have and an audience? We had an audience. Okay, that's good to know. Very different than New York audiences, mm -hmm. a British audience, but really sweet. They they loved the show the same way they loved it in New York. Um, it's it's. I have to be honest with you. It's a little bit of a strange experience. Tell I us. do this thing at the end of a show. So if you want to embarrass me in real life. Quote my show to me, to my face, and I'll go. What's that from? They're like, <laughs> <laughs> you just wipe it. Be, yeah, no, it's in the, well. Even if I'm in the show, I have no idea. If you want to double embarrass me, just quote one of my lines to me that I'm currently <laughs> saying on stage, and be like, what's that from? I don't know. I don't. It's a different part of your brain, I guess. I, I guess so. <laughs> I, or I don't know. My parents say that I was dropped a lot as a child, and so <laughs> here we go with SpongeBob, and at the end of the day. You know, I, I went straight from SpongeBob to Beetlejuice, which was, I feel really fortunate about that. I'll tell you all about that later. I want to hear. Um, but the day that SpongeBob closed, I hit that flush button. And I was like, flush. I, I will see it when I see it. I don't remember anything ever again. So to be called a couple months later and say, hey, and, and be told that we're going to do it again, I pan <laughs> full on panic, you know? <laughs> full on panic because. <laughs> I, I have no recollection, and everyone's like, muscle memory, muscle memory. It doesn't no work memory. for somebody that doesn't have, that has very little muscle <laughs> of any kind. And so you're just, you just start to sweat, and you're like, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. So I'm listening to the cast album, which don't talk to Wesley Taylor about that. Okay, Wes, come on, we want to talk to you. <laughs> don't talk to Wesley Taylor about that cast album. Uh, the, the cast album was done of the Chicago production Out of Town. And so completely That's not helpful yeah. to me trying to remember what we did on Broadway. So now I'm like, oh, I'm very actually, confused. Yeah, confused. <laughs> I have to actually read a script, you know, and it's like, uh, and, but okay, I'm long story short. I think it must have worked out in the end. It worked out fine. Okay, it worked I'm out fine. A little it it did. Here, there yeah. was a little bit of muscle memory there. But truth be told, is Tina Landau is incredible. Chris Catelli is incredible. Our entire team of Nickelodeon and SpongeBob is fantastic. And so you get back in the room with everyone, and it does, maybe it's not muscle memory, maybe it's an emotional attachment to certain mm -hmm. moments, and you just start to go, oh, this feels so good. It, it feels came so back. great to me. It came right back. That's so good. And the kids loved it, you know, and the audience will love it, and it will air this, this we'll weekend. We'll see it this week. Oh, my this goodness. Weekend, I, I can't say about, it felt good to do. We're going to be DVRing that. I got to hit the DVR because yeah. I got to be on stage. Now, booked and busy. Huh? I booked and busy and booked, booked and, and busy. busy. And Hashtag booked and right busy. there. So, and I know you guys have questions. We'll get to them one second. Just one second. I've got more questions. Confirm or deny, you did not audition for Beetlejuice. Alex Timber, you worked with Alex Timbers before, yes. and with Here Lies Love, of course, which is genius. So, uh, what is um, that true or false? That is kind of true, kind of false. Okay, good. I'm okay. glad we brought it up. So here's what happens. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe I'm telling you a lie. Um, it's true. Why do you think you're here? I, I, we want to hear it all. I'm going to tell you because, okay, this is what happened. <laughs> I've been in shows that have closed before, and it's fine. And things that, it happens. This is, this is the industry. The Broadway opens and closes, and you hope that your show runs forever. SpongeBob was my third show, and the company got us together and sat us down and said, unfortunately, the Palace Theater has to close. It's something that we could not foresee. We wish it wasn't happening, and unfortunately, our really successful, amazing show has to close. So I could see the writings on the wall because I read everything. I'm a dirty Broadway performer. I oh, read I like chat that. boards and uh, don't, reviews and everything, all of it. Everything. Okay, good. Everything. I like to know that. I, in public, I tell people that. I was like, oh, I have my boyfriend read it for me. No, no, no. I read them un until I fall asleep. I'm sure those people aren't watching Broadway.com. It's fine. Anyway, yeah, none of those people watch <laughs> Broadway.com. Um, so then, of course, you know, it's terrible news, and people are, are upset, and they're crying. And, you know, and I was upset for sure, but I saw it coming. And I walked right back to my dress room, and I started <laughs> emailing and texting the agent, being like, so the show's closing. What do you got? What do you got? That's uh, how it goes. And also, Beetlejuice was off the table for me because contract-wise, I, I didn't think I was available. Right. But I said, and don't forget about Beetlejuice. I really like that show. If there's anything for me there, please give I me a call. I may have met the director before. I may have. <laughs> I may have. And so they sent an email out to Alex and said, please audition. Alex is now the, also the most busiest book-blessed 
director in the world, Alex Timbers. If you don't know him, get it together. Look it up. <laughs> um, but so I got an e email to him and he said, I'm out of town doing Moulin Rouge. Um, of course, I would love to see you for the role of Otho. I sent in a video, read the that night, and I didn't hear from him for like a week or something. I was like, well, I really hate it. <laughs> I thought it was disgusting. Uh, and then you're so not emotional. I love that about yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, not at all. Just went home and just like, what do you mean? He has, he's trying to open a Broadway show. Um, he's not busy. I'm available now. Yeah, I'm available. He didn't watch my video. How dare he? Uh, got back to me in a week, and without ever walking into the room, I booked it. So that. Is crazy. That's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's not how it. That's, that's not, not how, you, not do how you do it at all. <laughs> that is called. I don't know. Is that nepotism? No. Uh, that, that's some kind of. Are you related to him? No, okay. I guess so. I don't. I, <laughs> dictionaries. They don't do those anymore. Um, but you know, it was really. I felt when I read the part and I, I had seen the sides before, and I thought to myself, "I'm right for this. I'm unfortunately not available." I, I feel very lucky that I was able to get in. Alex sees my soul. <laughs> <laughs> my very dramatic soul, and uh, you know the rest is history. Are you gonna get used to this? Like in the future, are you gonna be like, I'm available to your uh, agent. Offer only. <laughs> offer only. <laughs> offer only. The most I'm gonna do is a self tape. Tell Sutton. <laughs> Tell Sutton. <laughs> I'm available. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll consider it. All right. I know you have yeah. questions, Caitlin. What are our viewers asking? Yes, definitely. Okay, so Amelia wants to know what is it like having like packed houses and audiences at Beetlejuice oh. and like the Tell fans. Us about the rock What's that fan culture like? The What's fan culture is insane. So everybody knows that Beetlejuice is TikTok famous, very famoso. <laughs> it's insane. I, Why it, is that? It's because it's kind of got a younger vibe. I think you know it's. It really, I'm going to attribute it to two people, which one is Presley Ryan. Yes. Follow, Pres she Ryan. taught us all on the blog she how to do it. She'll teach you all. We need, we need lessons, Presley some of us. Presley is the standby for Lydia on Broadway. She's just turned 16 years old. She will teach you everything. Yeah. <laughs> she has all the answers. We're not young enough to know it all. No, I, no. I have no, I still, we have no I, idea. I have two <laughs> videos up there. I'm pretty sure they would both embarrass my mom. Don't follow <laughs> me on TikTok. I'm sure no one will now that you said so that. So that's her, mm -hmm. one. And then two would be Eddie Perfect. Eddie Perfect wrote the music, and there's something about the music that lends itself to TikTok videos where they are, they're completely actable, they're really fun. It was at, TikTok came out in a time where Beetlejuice was so in vogue, we were hitting the holiday season for mm -hmm. October, but it's far lasted beyond that. It's continuing. Yeah. Uh, the cosplay world has been insane since day one. Mm -hmm. Even when we were doing the show out of town at the National, and people would come Do you come see people dressed. dressed as you, as your role? I, I have. I have. Yeah, it's a gorgeous black suit with a really gorgeous <laughs> silk tie with like gorgeous pendants everywhere. And they found them. They found every single thing. Watch and out, Willie might be long. And they, uh, <laughs> careful. They can reconstruct. <laughs> um, they, and so they have reconstructed everything. And they come to the stage door and you, you have to meet them. They're, of they're incredible. So much effort. You know? It's a lot of effort. It's not like guy liner and a chain and a, that's no. not the thing anymore. The most that I would do, again, would hit record. <laughs> you know? That's but, all. And, but coming to see the show, and our fan base, we call them the Netherlings oh, from the Netherworld. Oh, I didn't know they had a name. Oh, that's great. And they are so incredible. They, it does kind of feel like a little bit of rock star life coming out to the stage. That's awesome. You know? I love it. Amazing. Okay. Thanks, yes. Emilio. Yes. So Nina wants to know, how do you get into the mood or like the vibe of Otho? And like, the, <laughs> like in like the, such a high energy, but they're like, how do you get into the mood of Otho? Um, Otho doesn't seem to have a down day. No, Otho doesn't have a down day. Um, Otho, so unlike me in so many ways. He is so full of himself. He loves attention. <laughs> it's so <laughs> weird. And it's so weird. Nothing like <laughs> me at all. Um, does Nina want to know like how I she thinks how I prepare up? how I hype myself for the role or how I wish I could hype myself <laughs> up for the role? Give it all. Tell us that. Let's go through it all. I feel like Otho has like you know a simple glass of wine like lodged in between his fingers at all time. Like never <laughs> takes a sip. Just swirling. And you know it's irresponsible. It it's irresponsible to drink at the theater. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay. But I I'm just gonna say but you know the Otho is how I wish I could carry myself mm. every single day. With he a cape is and a glass of wine. A cape? Oh, he doesn't have a cape, but I asked for one. There you go. But I asked for one. 
I wanted it made out of like sequins and blah, blah, blah. But so now I just have to imagine the cape flows mm -hmm. he, behind his me. His body language is cape-like. It is body mm -hmm. language. It is the body language. It's, it's, he's, but you know, he's, he's presentational. He's, but he's completely a fraud in so many ways. True. Again, completely unlike me in every way. <laughs> Um, but how do you get yourself ready? I get myself ready uh, by basically thinking to myself, well, me and Leslie Kritzer are going to be on stage together and that we are just going to do, <laughs> try to make these people laugh. Really, that's it. Do you listen to certain music or anything to get in the mood? No, I'm listening, I'm listening to the Beetlejuice playing in the background. Oh, there you, you go. Know? Yeah. <laughs> that gets me in the mood. That gets everybody in the mood. Yeah. Mm. That fires me up. I don't know. Otho's an idiot and I love him. <laughs> And we love him for that yeah. reason, too. I yes. think we have time for one more question, Katie. Yeah, last question. Okay, so Jenny just wants to know, what has been the most surprising slash exciting thing about Beetlejuice on Broadway for you so far? I, Besides the set coming at you. Oh, my gosh, that set. David Corrins, who I just learned did this beautiful set that I'm a huge fan of for so Thank long. Thank you, David Corrins. Um, it, it really is magical that moves forward. That's not my answer, David Corrins. <laughs> you get everything else, David. <laughs> my answer, the thing that's most surprising, um, really is how how much Beetlejuice has kind of thrived. Mm -hmm. These last couple months, it's been insane. This past week, we surpassed the Winter Garden box office record. It, and there have insane. been a lot of hits at the Winter Garden. There have been lots of hits. You it's got historic theater. You got Mamma Mia. You got School Rock. You got... Cats. Oh, there you, go. <laughs> you did it. Did you both do that yeah, at the same did. time? <laughs> Absolutely. Because you get it. We I get, get it. it. We all we get, get it. it. Cats <laughs> is amazing. I will fight you on it. I'll do a whole hour about cats with you. Um, uh, I'm ready. Let's but here's the thing about the, the, the Beetlejuice is uh, we had a record week. It was insane. And the fact that it just keeps going, going. There's so many people who come and I love the movie so much. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure about the musical. I'm s in love with the musical. You know, of course, and the adaptation comes across um, to a point where we continue to see our audiences grow and grow and grow. We're sold out nearly every night. And it's just lovely to have everybody there. Death, it's so relatable. Death, it's so relatable. <laughs> I can't wait to see it, a show about death, over and over and over again. Me too. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Calvin, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Come back tomorrow. We'll talk about cats. Cats. Great. Caitlin, will you take us on out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Kyle Harris of The Inheritance.